What it do, baby? Hey, my lovers and friends. Thank you so much for watching this, first and foremost. Secondly, we haven't been here for a while, but I had to come back for this because, look, my life has changed forever because I watched the best thing that I have seen on television in the longest time. Last time we did this was for Emily in Paris. This time around, it was just so big, so heavy, so incredible that I had to bring in one of my best friends in the whole entire world and somebody I get to work with every single day. I'm talking about... Out, young I'm jolly. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so we work together at 5 FM on 5 Lunch. My name is Zanele. This is Younger, and today we're going to be doing a young breakdown of the Underground Railroad. The reason I call it that is because I don't think you can review this. No, you can't. It's a 5 out of 5. We've already told you. We've like, decided. Yeah, yeah, you just, you have to go watch it. It is what it is. Don't even try. And we're going to be giving you 10 reasons as to why you need to go watch the Underground Railroad. So reason number one, Tuson Bedroom. Reason number two, Tuson Bedroom. Reason number three, the main character, Tuson Bedroom. Yeah. Reason number four, Tuson Bedroom. Yeah, reason number five, Tuson Bedroom. Yeah, reason number six, the main character who's played by Cora, who's played by, oh, what? Tuson Bedroom. Yeah, yes. Tuson Bedroom. Wait, reason number seven. Tucson Bedu. Reason number eight, you guessed it. Tucson Bedu. <laughs> okay, we're kidding. We're kidding. Kind of, but not really. But like, you know, we can't make all of them Tucson. In any case, though, we should start with the real ones from this, number yeah. 10. There's anger in you. It'll fuel you. Yes, but... What's the worst kind of fuel? The worst kind. This is literally, and we agree with this, one of the best things you've ever seen on television and also the best thing that we've seen in a very long time. Like I know the last five out of five was with Queen's Gambit and I think that was like, you know, great, but it doesn't have anything on the Underground Railroad, nah. For me, so. I think the Underground Railroad was my five out of five. I don't think there's anything that's topped great. that for me. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, I yeah. can agree with that a hundred percent. Number nine. What belongs to you? Number nine, mm -hmm. I think the Underground Railroad definitely proves and shows that your dreams are valid and yeah. they can come true. Mm -hmm. Having Tusa come from ETV doing scandal as Kitsombit. I think Kitsu I don't know. Oh well, okay. she was on Scandal. <laughs> she was there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was there. And this Tunzi and all of those other things. Yeah. And now she's the lead character on the Underground Railroad. Guys, what a jump. So, the first South African actress to ever do that. Yes. To be in the lead in a US series. And that's why it's such a big thing. And I think we spoke about this. The fact that, like, Tusa was literally the lead. And she carried the whole thing. So with other people, it's like, yeah, you're the main character. But they're like, go show what Jenny's doing. And what Sarah's also doing. And then show also what, like, Jacob's doing. You know what I'm saying? It's almost, The entire series is structured around her. She's yeah. in 99.9% .9 of all the scenes. You see her everywhere. It's beautiful. The story is told from different perspectives of her life, from different characters. Yeah. 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 It, look, it's a lot. It's incredible. But she literally is the lead actress. And I think it's just, it's one of the most beautiful things. Like Yanga said, I think I, every time I think about uh, the Underground Railroad, I get goosebumps. Because I'm like, guys, Tuso did that. And the thing is that she did it so well, but we'll get to that later. Let's go number eight. What's her name? So number eight has got to be the roller coaster ride that it takes you on. So yes, people like write things and put them out there and you know, you feel things. But with this, you go from being the saddest human in the world. There's this one scene uh, in episode one, which is the big Anthony scene. Anelam Dota said she couldn't watch it. Barry Jenkins, the director, said he walked off set. And that was the first time he ever did in his whole life. As in like, I mean, they did the scene and everything. But once it was done, he just walked off set because he was like just so taken aback by it and it was just so heavy so be ready to watch that because for me i think when that when that specific scene came on i um i stopped like for a little bit and i went and did what i had to do and then i went back to it to be ready for it no i i watched it like i watched it i finished it mm. as soon as it was finished it just felt really quiet the series continued but it, the room was quiet it changes the mood mm. that scene was powerful and when you think of that, you move from Big Anthony to a whole other scene 
where at this point maybe you're just curious, you're inquisitive, you're like, what's going on here? To being excited because maybe something good's happening for Cora, to maybe thinking, oh my gosh, this yes, is Yes, in episode two. Yes. Exactly. So that's that's the thing. So episode one, you're like so like, ooh, and then episode two, you're like, girl, Cora, you got this. They're like, you're like, where is it going to go from here? Did you find yourself asking that? Because for me, I was yeah. like, okay, but what now? And you're hoping that everything's just like smooth sailing from here. Maybe they're just dips and dabs of like sad moments, but like ultimately it's going to be a happy story and it's not. It's not. So please can I tell you that for me, when I started watching this, right? And when I saw it was coming out, I thought it was going to be like a Wizard of Oz thing, right? Oh. Where she, no, I promise you, where she was going to find this underground railroad and then she's going to take all the people and like save them. Okay. And everyone's okay. going to, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, no, okay, I That's get what you. I told myself when I was going to be like, it's going to be about this heroine, which she actually is. She really is a hero in the story. But I thought every day, so my happy, we're going to be like, yes, God, I'm saving the slaves. No! <laughs> You're going to cry, my babes. You're going to cry your eyes out, I promise you. In any case, let's move on to number seven. Name? Brand. Number seven, the love stories. Yes. Guys, Cora goes through the most. Mm. But the one thing you can be excited for is the fact that, you know, it looks like they might be a potential person. Mm. That, you know, we hope to see her within future. We want to see things, something happen there. And every time it looks like something's about to happen, uh, yeah, no. We're just we're just letting you know. Yeah. Because like just to be ready. I mean, this thing was so deep that people like Oprah and Barry Jenkins and Tuso, they've all said that you can't like take it in all at once. Like from yeah. episode one to ten, you need to take breaks in between. So don't binge watch it. Like watch it in between. I watched it in a day and a half. She binge watched it. I binge it. watched it. I, I guys, there was a point where I went to the bathroom and I was there. I was sad. I was like, what are we gonna do now? And I was like, oh no, it's not real. <laughs> then there was another point where I was just driving. I was like. Lord, please help Cora. Hi, Zanella. She's not a real character. <laughs> I mean, she's not a real person. It's just a character. So that was, uh, it, it really is deep. But the love stories is definitely number seven. Um, Cora and Caesar, love them. Cora and Royal, love, love them. them. It's, ah, it's just so beautiful. Just go check it out for yourself and you will see. Number six. You came all this way on the railroad. Yeah. Left behind all those peoples. <laughs> Number six has got to be the script. It was written so beautifully. So if you did not know that this specific uh, series was based off of a book by Colson Whitehead, which is also called The Underground Railroad, which is actually based on an actual underground railroad, but not literally, figuratively. Back in the 1800s, it was just like a network of people that used to help slaves uh, pretty much get away from their masters and stuff. So those slaves who had run away, mm. there was a network of people who would then help them like hide and get even further away from these people that were trying to catch them. So this is what it's based off of. So that's the really painful thing I think about Underground Railroad is the fact that yes, it's fiction, but it's based off of history and things that actually happened. And I think that's why episode nine, like it broke me. Every other time I was like, tia, tia here and there, but it broke me as a whole. But back to number six. Uh, the script was written really beautifully. One of my favorite lines was, um, people will justify, I mean, people will do anything that they deem as just. Yeah. And that's me paraphrasing. That like, if they think that there's justice in what they're doing, then they will try to find ways to be like, okay, cool, this is the reason X, Y, Z, and they'll believe in it, even though it's wrong. Another thing I loved about the script was the fact that you could not predict anything. Yeah. There are moments where you're just like, oh my goodness, Cora, run, someone run, you know, get out of somewhere or like escape. But then you're also thinking, but if she does that, what will happen? Yes. So you don't know. There's certain things that happen that make you hate Cora. And mm. then it's later revealed you actually had no reason to hate her because I guess that's just the way things were supposed to happen. Did you hate her at some point? I did hate her. <gasps> That's I so weird because I loved her all throughout. Maybe it's because of my love for Tuso Bedu. I don't know. But I really, I never hated Cora at any point. No, I love Tuso. It is her, it's no, her, definitely. Yes, it's, it's her mm. portrayal yes. as Cora. No, definitely. There's just a scene, I am no spoiler. <laughs> there is a scene where she makes a certain decision which I just disapproved of. And <laughs> I thought, what like, episode was it in? This is, you know what, I can't tell you what episode actually because I don't remember the episodes by okay, number. Okay. Something had happened and she decided to be a hero in her mind and then she got a bunch of people killed. Okay, fine. I get what Young is saying. I mean, you have to go watch it to find out what she just said now. But I don't agree, but it's fine. 
I don't hate her. Yeah, I know that. I hated yes. her for a moment. Yes. She's such a good actress. <laughs> no, no, no. We're not talking about Tuso. You're talking about Cora. Yes. So, yes. Hence, I'm saying. I get what you mean by hating Cora. But in any case, number, number five. Or five of him. <laughs> Our boss has paid us to say that. Jokes. <laughs> 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 Was given all was earned. Hold on. That brings us to number five, actually. The history. One of the biggest things about it is the fact that the Underground Railroad reflects what happened back in history, like I said earlier on. But I think that it really just shows you so many truths that you weren't aware of. And also another thing, um, even this guy, he said it, I think in episode nine, like I said, broke me. He was like that you can't get rid of slavery everything because of the ripple effect of slavery is then affected by it and it'll never not be affected by it so even in today's world we still you know are living in times where we live through the repercussions of, of slavery. slavery exactly yeah. so for me i think that's one of the biggest things just the history that was shared and also just how much it kind of also showed us that you know Back then, they were running from, you know, their masters and whatnot, whatnot. And to this day, unfortunately, black people are still living in fear. No, definitely. Mm. Another thing, I think, in regards to history is just how much I learned about slavery. Yeah. And it made me realize that I don't think there is that much information given to us just in regards to what actually happened during the times when people owned slaves, how slaves were treated. Yeah. There are so many things you're going to learn about when you watch the Underground Railroad. It's a lot. A lot of practices that I was not aware of. But look, you learn a lot. And at the same time, you're entertained, but not entertained smiley. You're entertained in the sense that you cannot stop watching mm. because you're learning, but you're also actually being emotionally influenced by what you're watching. Yeah, yeah. And also just in terms of like the whole thing of like it reflecting even our times today, I think Tuson Pedro said the same thing as well. She was like, you know, you watch it and you're kind of just like, but, you know, we still kind of live like this. And yeah. obviously not necessarily slavery, slavery, mm. but just like things of like fear, just yeah. because your skin is black and all yeah. of those things. It really is. I think it's a very rude awakening for even us who are woke and know what is happening in today's time. Yeah. Yeah. Episode, episode four. <laughs> I want to go watch it now. <laughs> Reason number four. Girl in that bulletin is wanted for the murder of a child. We actually bought this just to have refreshments while we were doing this. Um, this is not a review. Uh, we're still reviewing the Underground Railroad, but it is a double shot coffee and tea, craft iced tea. Mm. That's what I wanted to tell you because I've never had a craft iced tea in my life. So this is interesting. I was about to be like, this is awkward. <laughs> no, here it is. Okay, in any case, let's go number four. So number four. Well, the fourth reason to watch the Underground Railroad mm. is the cast. Yes. Yes. So. Sorry, my hair. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Let's go. Number four. So the fourth reason to watch the Underground Railroad is definitely the cast. Yes. You might have seen a few characters or a few people played in different series or different movies, but when you see them in the Underground Railroad, they are not who you thought they were. No. They are. No. They are not. No. You will completely diso like disassociate from who you know them as. Yes. Yeah. You're, I think one of the biggest shockers for me, I think it's because I just had, um, I had just discovered it, and it is The Good Place on Netflix. His name is William Jackson Harper, and he's one of the main characters on The Good Place, which is a comedy, mm. and it's like witty and cute and all this stuff. Very, very funny. And he is like this guy who is super like quirky and whatnot on there. And then he comes on freaking the Underground Railroad and he's this man. And I'm like, damn son, that's an actor. Like he completely became the opposite of what you see in The Good Place. It was incredible. For me, that's, I have the same feeling, but that's for Sam. Mm. Sam is played by Will Holter. Yes. Will Holter. So if you've seen Where the Millers, right? Yes. You would have known him as basically the guy who plays their son. And he's just guys like he's just a joke there like they mistreat him <laughs> he's not a serious person but when yes. you see him in the underground railroad guys that guy's serious i it's know not a who joke. you're talking about yes. <gasps> he's serious he's a very serious person you you completely forget about that i only thought about it like later on today when mm. we were like okay cool let me just like look at a few of the characters like faces and i thought wow 
that's well. Yes. Oh my goodness. And this is the thing. That's like shouting out one or two people who've just seen as complete opposites to what we saw in the underground railroad. We say the cast at number four because every body was incredible. Everyone, from the person who said two lines to the people who were like second to Tuso, to Tuso herself, it was crazy. Yeah. The lady who um, cast them, her name is Francie Maisler. I even know her, as in like I know her name. I mean, hey Francie. <laughs> <laughs> I know her name because she did such a good job. And like Tuso mentioned her and I was like, oh my goodness, I need to keep that name in my head forever because she did such a legendary, iconic thing with how she cast everyone so perfectly. And I think... Even Joel Edgerton, mm. who was the antagonist, the guy who was like, you know, against Tuso, he killed it. Be- one of the best villains I've seen ever. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't think of anyone else to cast in this position. Yeah. Seeing his performance, I thought, okay, wow, look, we know some really good actors yeah. worldwide, known for being villains. He killed it. Yeah. No one else but him, and that's how we felt about everyone. Yeah. Every single person. Number three. You run away. Sure. This is the most <laughs> exciting one. Okay, well, I mean, other than outside of number one, which you're leaving for last. But number three was without a doubt the cinematography. Oh my goodness. I think it was Ukaya Langa who said that every single picture, or rather every single frame, is like a piece of art. And it's true. You look at even when they're showing like a leaf, it's the most beautiful leaf that you've ever seen in your life. I promise you. Am I not lying? No, you're not. And it also makes you think, guys. Like, every time there's a new shot or anything, you just sit there and you're like, how did you guys set this up? Where is this place? Like, where are you guys filming? But you're also like, Tuso, go where are you? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's breathtaking, guys. Like, it's absolutely beautiful. Like, I'm just like, what kind of cameras do they use? That was my biggest question. I was like, what's going on there? Because why does it look so different to everything else we've ever seen? The it, quality. Crisp, clean, guys. beautiful, stunning. Loved it. Let's go number two, Yangle Jangle Bangle. Uh, so, number two is a Barry, I want to say Jenkins. Yes, it is! We love Barry Jenkins! Sorry! That's how excited we were the phone that's Sorry. naked dropped. This is no cover. Oh. <laughs> Barry Jenkins! I'm like a Barry Jenkins stan. Like, I mean, who isn't, if we're being honest? Oscar winner. He's black, he's young, he's killing it. He gave us the Underground Railroad, gave us Moonlight and all those other beautiful things. But yep, this... Moonlight. But Dude. this, this, what's a bigger word than love? <laughs> Agape, I, what, what is it? What, it, what, what is that, that kind of love that they talk about? Because there's kinds of loves. And then I think this is, uh, there's agape love, which is kind of the love that like God has for us, I think. I might be lying. We're going to check this. It is correct, ne? But the most yes. love that you can love, that's how much we love the underground railroad yes so thank you barry barry you are mm, barry yo i mean from like just a joking point of view we're in love with you but just from a like real point of view like hi bo dude like you are a freaking trailblazer an icon uh, a, a, an inspiration and just continuing to show the black child that it is possible i mean yeah. you've done it before and now with underground railroad just killed it so before we get to number one Yanga's gonna do a couple of special mentions because like we told you everybody was just great man but obviously some people stuck out a little bit but i feel like different people stick out for different individuals as you watch so these are Yanga's. so number three because i'm just gonna do two to three number three definitely look out for a character named mingo when you see mingo take out a little notebook write down some quotes and notes make Make a few things just known to yourself to keep in mind because something will happen. I don't want to say it's Mingo's fault. It is his fault. <laughs> it's his fault. I'm angry. But remember Mingo. <laughs> Number two, definitely look out for Ethel Wells. Ethel is married to Aww. Martin. When you see Martin, you will meet Ethel. But Ethel also plays a bit on your heart because at both first, yes, both of them, but Ethel more than Martin because Martin, you kind of know Martin's a good guy, but Ethel, his wife, you're not too sure of in the beginning. She does something that confuses you and more things that confuse you, but in the end, her fate makes you feel like maybe she was someone you could trust. Don't you feel? Yeah, I do. I do. And number one, Homer. 
when you see Homer. Who's Homer again? Homer. Oh, Homer. I hate Homer. <laughs> I hate Homer. Probably more than his boss, which is the main bad guy. When you see Homer, you'll see Homer. So those are my honorable <laughs> mentions. <laughs> you just need to see Homer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Homer's amazing. Oh my goodness. What a freaking star. He's a... He is great at being himself and he is terrible. <laughs> Homer is terrible, but he does a fantastic job. He's the worst. I was just about to spoil something for you, but go watch it. You'll see what we're talking about. <laughs> okay, then, of course, um, for me, the most heart-wrenching thing. So I told you about the moment with Big Anthony, right? Where people couldn't watch Barry Jenkins walk oh. off and everything. But the most heart-wrenching thing, <gasps> episode nine. At the end of episode nine, I sobbed. I cried. I cried as if someone had died, and I'm not even joking. It was so difficult to watch, and I think the biggest thing was, and obviously I'm not going to tell you what happened. You got to go watch it. But I think the biggest thing that happened was that it reminded me of what used to happen back in the day. So not just in slavery, but in South Africa as well. Like we know what used to happen in apartheid. Mm. So I was there, like hyena guys. Like this is what our people used to go through. And I, yeah, no, and and I think it, it's also scary because w one of the biggest things that even reminds you of is the fact that it's even happening now with Israel and Palestine. Yeah. So I think yeah. that, that's another really painful thing that really hit my heart because I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah, I think that's another um, reminder of the fact that it is almost like a mirror of, hey man, this stuff was happening hundreds of years ago and yet it's still happening now. Again. And that's also supposed to remind us that film and while a lot of elements of media are supposed to like hold a mirror up to society yes. to show society what society doesn't want to see and look the underground railroad just as Zanelli said at the end of episode 9 you can sit back and think about the fact that we are in 2021 that that entire the entire series is not it's not based in yeah. this this decade Era, yeah yes not even in this century, this century yes. so oh. it's scary but it's also something that's very needed. And that's why I think a lot of people, not a lot of people, everyone needs to go watch it. Everybody needs to go watch it. With yeah. that being said, let's give you reason number one of why you need to go and watch it. Are you ready? Drum roll. <laughs> number one. To some battle. Oh, no ways. No freaking ways. Like, I don't... I don't think there are actually words to describe what Tusom Bedu did in the Underground Railroad. I say that because she even blew away an entire Oprah Winfrey. She said she's never seen such a consistent <sighs> performance in her whole entire life. Guys, Tuso, Tuso became Cora. And when we, when we say that, we just mean Tuso does not sound South African. She was in a whole different century mm. she Zanil even said the other day she commented on it when we were speaking about the show she was like dude Tuso learned how to walk different how to just like her gestures even just like just being calm and being like yo guys no she spoke different she she stood different like it was ah dude it was sublime it was incredible I can't wait for her to win the Emmy because she's going to I can't wait for her to win an Oscar one day because oh, she's going guys. to multiple of them actually guys. Emmy Golden Globe Oscar she's gonna oh God, she's gonna be there that's gonna be too so like it was literally like Yanga said she became Cora and Cora became Tuso. Like it was one person there was no sign of Tuso in that character yeah and it was beautiful to watch and anyone who watches it is just like taken by her. Even mm. Matthew A. Cherry, Oscar winner, he was like, just give her the Emmy. Like, back it up. Give her all of them. Just give her. And one of the things I said to the Five Breakfast team the other day, because they asked me for a little bit of a review since I'd watched all 10 episodes, I was like, guys, remember a few years ago when the Golden Globes or the Emmys, I think, became the Modern Family Awards? Yeah. That's what's going to happen with the Underground Railroad. Mm. Is all the awards are going to go to them, and I, I will fight anyone. And they, it's in the USA, but I'm going to get there. But they, and they kind of should. All the awards kind of should go there. Like, I don't know. I'm not... We're not fortune tellers. We don't know what else is going to be re like released later on this year. We don't care. But I don't know if it'll be better than no. the Underground Railroad. No. Not I'm too no. sure about that. Nah, 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 nah. And honestly and truly, just as a whole, I think that was one of the best performances I've ever seen on television. And like, I think only thing that really even you can compare it to, and Oprah even said this, 
is the fact that Utuso reminds her of Viola Davis. And we know how Viola loses herself in a character. Oh, Viola, too, guys. Like, and that's why it only makes sense that they're going to be together in Woman King. I'm so excited. Shooting it in South Africa. Oh. In any case, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, honestly and truly, one of the best performances you will have ever seen on screen. And I also think that, like, just a young message to Tuso. I feel like, Tuso, you allowed every single person. So not just child, every person in South Africa to dream even greater than what they were dreaming already. Yeah. Because you showed that it is so possible uh, for somebody, and not even just in the entertainment industry, for anyone who has a dream, to see it for themselves just like you did and then allow it to become a reality. And I don't think there's anything that can allow any of us to be able to thank you for what you've done and congratulations you were everything and more i don't even know what to say i'm just like i'm mesmerized you're incredible and you are literally a gift from god that is what you are that's why every single time i think of the underground railroad i get goosebumps because yeah. i'm like guys that thing was excellent and the whole time to some bed who carried it and sure man you're amazing we love you love you you were so amazing to the point where we would come in and just discuss it and I'd be like, is that, is Cora's voice, is that Tuso? Yeah, 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 no, ask that you like, I, I, Tuso. I could not believe how well you became Cora. Mm. Your accent. Wow. Sublime. 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 Never. You also, like in a sense, she had this maturity. Mm. I've never seen that. Me I've too. never seen that. You were a fully grown, I have lived this entire life, African-American woman living in sleep, like in slavery. Yeah. You killed it. You did amazing. You made South Africa proud, <laughs> mad proud. Yeah. And also you're a huge motivation. You're, you're like a huge, not is it? No, you're a huge inspiration yes. to young people, old people, anyone in like South Africa, hoping to be where you are to make the moves that you've made. So Tuso, thank you so much. South Africa, thanks you. 100%. And I also just want to say that uh, just from like a God perspective, I feel like Tuso is literally just an example of living out your purpose to the fullest. Yeah. And like God completely showing his power through you and just living out or rather even making sure that your purpose is lived out. And I think that just what you've done has made like so many other people just believe in God and the promises he's given to you even more. So you, on top of just being a freaking superstar, you're a testimony, mm. you are a source of light, mm. you are somebody that is loved and appreciated and may God just continue to give you everything that your heart desires. That's it. Amen. Amen. And that is the reason, along with all of those nine reasons, the ten reasons, why you should watch the Underground Railroad. This was fun, right? This was so fun. Yeah. Yeah, Thank after you. this, if you haven't seen it, you should go watch it. Like, please just go watch it. Like, we're going to try to edit out any of the parts where we might have spoiled it a little bit, because we know, we don't want to spoil it for you, because it's incredible. It's amazing. Amazing. But yeah, go do the right thing. Check it out. It's on Prime Video. We love you. Thank you so much for checking this out. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you once again next time. Mwah! And thank you for being here, Django. Thank you for having me. Give me a hug. Oh. Okay. We're make real sure. friends. Are you, are we, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you feel the need to say that? <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay, because you can tell. Oh, okay. Anyway, we also do work on the same show on Five and Fame. <laughs> I know it's crazy, right? God's amazing like that. Check us out 12 to 3 p.m. Monday to Friday on Five and Fame. My.